Shabbat Shalom and welcome to another edition of the East Northport Jewish Center Shabbat Supplementary Video Series. I'm your co-host, Chazan Stephen Wallach, along with Rabbi Ian Silverman. We're here to present you with some Torah and tefillah, some music and words to enhance your at-home Shabbat experience. This week, we'll be starting with Ma Tovu, which many of you are familiar with this melody. You may not know that in fact this melody is around. So I'll call upon this week's ensemble to demonstrate how it's done. Ma tovu, o halecha yakov, mishkenotecha, Quite a pleasure not to have to sing on my own again this week, but I had the honor of singing with my classmates from the Jewish Theological Seminary of America. Those were Hazanim, Jenna Greenberg, Wendy Portman Freed, and Seth Adelson, who since turned to the dark side and became a rabbi. We don't talk about that. In any case, before we read from the Torah, we will take out the Torah. Uh, and here is the Torah service you're following near Sidur, page 139. <speaking in Hebrew> Behaltor Vador Adonai Melech Adonai Malach Adonai Imloch Leolam Vaed Adonai Oz Leamoyitain Adonai Yevare Et Amo Shalom Hatarachamim Etiva Virtsoncha Etzion Tivne Chomot Yerushalayim Kievecha Levad Batachno Melech El Rambenisa Adon Olamim. Vayihi Vim Zaharon Vayomer Moshe Koma Adonai Be'afoto Yeah. 
Free to sing along. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Echad Eloheinu Gadol Adonai. Kadosh Shemo God lo Ladonai ti O Nerom Ma Shemo Yachdav Lecha Adonai Hagidula Behagivura Behati Feheret Behanetha Behahod Ki chol v'shamayim u'v'aretz Lecha Adonai ha'mamalacha V'hamitna ha'se lechol erosh Romemo, Romemo Adonai Eloheinu V'hishtachavu, v'hishtachavu L'hadom ragav ha'dosh hu'hu Romemo, Romemo Adonai Eloheinu Vehishtachavu Vehishtachavu Lehar Kodsho Ki Kadosh Adonai Eloheinu And with that, it is my honor to reintroduce my co-clergy, Rabbi Ian Silverman. Take it away, Rabbi. Shabbat Shalom, and we're delighted to again host you this this beautiful YouTube for Shabbos Nasso. Uh, a short intro as to what this parsha is in a nutshell, and then I will read for you from the triennial section, which begins uh, chapter four twenty one and goes to chapter five verse ten. Today's parsha covers a lot of ground. It deals with the Mishkan, the tabernacle, and its transportation during the journey of the desert, and the responsibilities of the Kohanim and the special Levitical families in their transport. It deals with the need to separate those with defilements of the body outside of the camp and the mitzvot that surround the subject of the suspected adultery of a wife uh, the uh, ordeal of Sota, and the, uh, the wife and the jealous husband, and the mitzvah uh, that concerned the oath of a Nazarite, of a Nazir, and his abstinence and uh, abstinence from wine and from shaving and taking haircuts for the purposes in the uh, Bible of coming closer to God, emotional and spiritual improvement. And finally, at the end, our Parsha concerns itself with the consecration of the tabernacle and the altar by the bringing of gifts of each of the tribes. The gifts of all the tribes are equal, uh, exactly equal to emphasize that one tribe should not feel a sense of superiority over the other. We now begin with the Torah reading. Chapter 4, verse 21, in the Etzchayim, page 791. Baruch atadonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kitshanu yisrotam b'tzivano l'asok b'divrei Torah. Vayidaber Adonai el Moshe leimar naso et rosh b'nei gershon gam hem v'et abotam l'mishbarotam iben shloshim shana v'amala ad ben chamishim shana tivkod otam 
כל הבא נצמוד צבא לעבוד עבודה ביועל מועד. זאת עבודת משפחות הגרשונים לעבוד למסע. ונעשו את יריות המשכן ואת אוהל מועד. מרסהו ומרסה התחש אשר עליו מלמעלה ואת מסע פתח אוהל מועד קרא החצר ואת מסע פתח שערי חצר אשר נשכן מעל מזבח סביב ואת מטריהם ואת כל כלי עבודתם ואת כל אשר יעשה להם עבדו על פי ארון ובניו תהיה כל עבודת בני הגרשונים לכל המעשם לכל עבודתם וקדתם עליהם במשמרת את כל מעשם זאת עבודת משפחות בני הגרשוני בעול מועד ומשמרתם ביד איתמר בן אהרון הכהן בני מררים נשפרותם לבית אבותם תפקוד אותם מבין שלושים שנה ומעלה ביד בן חמישים שנה תפקדם כל הבא לצבא לעבוד את עבודת אור למועד וזאת משמרת מסעם לכל עבודתם ביום המועד קרשי המשכן ובריחה ועמודה ועד עיניו ועמודי חצר סביב ועד ניהם ביטל אותם ומת ראם לכל כליהם לכל עבודתם ובשמות תפקדו את כדי משפרת מסעם זאת עבודת משפט בני מררי לכל עבודתם. באוהל מועד ביד איתמר בן אהרון הכהן ויפקוד משה ואהרון נשיאי העדה התנקתי למשפחתם לבית אבותם מבין שלושים שנה ומעלה ביד בן חמישים שנה כל הבן הצבא לעבודה ביום מועד, ויהיו פקודיהם למשפחותם אלפיים, שבה מאות וחמישים אלה פקודי משפחת הקהתי, כל העובד ביום מועד אשר פקד משה ואהרון על פי אדוני ביד, משה ופקודי בני גרשון ממשפחתם לבית אבותם מבין שלושים שנה ומעלה ועד בין חמישים שנה כל הבן הצבא לעבודה ביום מועד ויהיו פקודיהם ממשפחתם לבית אבותם אלפיים שש מאות ושלושים אלה פקודי משפחות בני גרשון כל העובד ביום מועד אשר פקד משה ואהרון על פי אדוני ופקודי משפחות בני מררי למשפחתם לבית אבותם אבותם מבין שלושים שנה ומעלה ועד בין חמישים שנה כל הבעל הצבא לעבודה ועול מועד ויהיו פקודיהם למשפחתם שלושת אלפים ומאתיים אלה פקודי משפחות בני מררי אשר פקד משה ואהרון על פי אדוני ביד משה כל הפקודים אשר פקד משה ואהרון ונשיאי ישראל את הלווים למשפחתם לבית אבותם מבין שלושים שנה ומעלה ועד בין חמישים שנה כל הבא לעבוד עבודת עבודה ועבודת מסע ואוהל מועד ויהיו פקודיהם שמונת אלפים וחמש מאות ושמונים על פי אדוני פקד אותם ביד משה איש איש על עבודתו ועל מסעו כתב אשר ציווה אדוני את משה 
וידבר אדוני אל משה לאמור צב תנאי ישראל וישלחו מן המחנה כל צר רוח וכל זב וכל טמן הנפש מזכר ועד נקבה תשלחו אל מחוץ למחנה תשלחו ולא יטמעו על מחניהם אשר אני שוכן בתוכם ויעשו חן בני ישראל וישלחו אותם אל מחוץ למחנה כאשר דיבר אדוני אל משה כנשאו בני ישראל וידבר אדוני אל משה לאמור דבר אל בני ישראל איש איש, איש או אישה כי יעשו מכל חטאות האדם למול מל בדוני ואושמה הנפש ההיא ויתוודו אל חטאתם אשר עשו ושיבו ושיב את אשמו בראשו וחמישיתו יוסף עליו ונתן אשר אשם לו ואם אין לה איש כהן להשיב אשם אליו אשם מושב לאדוני לכהן מלבד אל הכיפורים אשר יכפר בו עליו וכל תרומה לכל קודשי בני ישראל אשר יקריבו לכהן לו יהיה ואיש את קדושיו לא יהיו איש אשר ייתן לכהן לא יהיה And that is the end of the triennial section of the Torah. At this time, I'd like to call upon Chazen Walvik, who will introduce our Haftorah. Yashikoach, Rabbi. Baruch This week's Haftorah has always troubled me. But... Now I see it through a slightly different lens. This is the story of the announcement of the birth of Shimshon of Samson. And uh, at, at first blush, it's uh, the, the story of the, the Manoach and his wife being visited by an angel who announces that the, the birth of Samson is coming. And uh, it always struck me as a, a little bit of a slap in the face to the wife of Manoach. You know, the, the angel comes to, to the wife of Manoach and the, the angel tells her what she has to do and she goes home and she tells her husband and instead of accepting her at her word, she pr- he prays to God to send the messenger again to, to tell him the same stuff because he has to hear it with his own ears. He doesn't trust his wife. And uh, maybe as a, as, a, as a rebuke, when the messenger comes again, the messenger doesn't come to Manoach, but comes back to the wife. Because if God wanted to speak originally to Manoach, he would have sent someone to Manoach. But, but God's plan was to send the angel to, to the wife, and so the angel comes back to the wife. Uh, but the, the wife, realizing that maybe her husband's not going to believe it if it doesn't come out of the angel's mouth himself, Uh, She runs and grabs her husband so that uh, he can hear with his own ears the exact same thing that had been uh, told told him before from from the wife. And, and, uh, you know, there's a little bit of misogyny here. Maybe we don't don't trust the the word of a woman or or something like that. And and that's always been troubling to me for many years. Um, Until we've come into a time of fake news, a time of, of unsubstantiated stories, uh, of a time when it seems like our world is filled with more rumors, more half-truths, more spin, and more lies. They're all trouble. 
And, and uh, the worst is if you, if you go on, uh, on your social media, you know, half the things that your, your friend and your, 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 your family send you are not always true. And I think there is an important message, an important lesson we can glean from this text. Maybe it's okay to be a little skeptical, to, be, to take a step back at least and especially before you share a story, double-check. That's why there are, there are sites like Fact Checker and Snopes.com that you can search and, and, and find out whether the, 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 the tale that you've just seen is actually true or based completely in rumor or completely fabricated. Because what this world needs more is truth and less fake news. Less stories that are, are, are meant to titillate and to anger you and to get you all riled up, and more to understand what's actually going on, uh, especially with what's, what's happening today uh, with the, the, the protests and the riots and, you know, and the, 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 the pandemic. It's a very confusing world we live in, and there's a lot of conflicting stories, and it's probably best to wait before making judgments and making assumptions on what's actually happening. And the only thing that we know is that our country is in pain. Our country is suffering. There are many in this, in this great country of ours that uh, are, 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 are suffering tremendously. And before we make judgments, before we assume we know who's doing it and what they're doing and why they're doing it, let's take a moment to breathe, to think, to research before we pass judgment. Indeed. I'm hoping that uh, this video segment will be followed by uh, Howie Lewin doing the Haftarah. Uh, if he is capable of recording it, that will happen right about here. If not, he'll have to see me again. So, Bezrat Hashem, Howie, take it away. Vaira Malach Adonai El Haisha, Vayomer Eleha, Hinena Atakara, Velo Yaladet, Veharit Vayaladet Bain, Veata Hisham Rina, Veal Tishti Yain Vishehar, Veal Tohli Kol Tamei, Ki Hinahara. Yeladit Bain Umora Loya Ale Al Rosho Kinezir Elohim Ye Hanar Min Habaten Vehu Yahel Leoshia et Israel Niat Tishtim Vatavo Haisha Vatomelisha Lemor Ishu Elohim ba Eli Umarehu Bimare Malach Elohim Dora Mehod Velo Shial Tishi Il Tihu Emizehu Vieshemo Lohigidli Vayo Meli Hina Haraviola de Pain Viata al tishti yain vishecha ve al tochli kol tuma kin dezir Elohim yie hanar min habeten viad moto vayetar manoach el Adonai vayomar bi Adoni Ishu Elohim Ashe Shalachta Yavonaod Eilenu Viyarenu 
Manasa lana hayulad. Vaishma ho Elohim bekol manoach. Vayavo malach. Elohim, Elohim od. Elaisha. Vehi yoshevet besadeh pasadeh. Vomanoach isha ein ima. Vat maher haisha. Vata harat vata gelisha. Vata omer elav. Hine nira elai haish. Asher va vayom elai. Vayakam. Vayelech manoach achare ishto. Vayavo el haish. Vayom eloho. Hata haish. אשר דיברת אל האישה, ויאמר אני, ויאמר מנוח, אתה יבוא דבריך, מה יהיה משפט ענן ומעשהו. ויאמר מלאך אדוני אל מנוח, מכל אשר אמרתי אל האישה, תישמר. מכל אשר יצא מגפן היין לא תאכל ויין ושכר אל תשת וכל טומאה אל תאכל כל אשר ציוויתה תשמור ויאמר מנוח המלאך אדוני נצרנה אותך ונעשה לפניך גדי עזים ויאמר מלאך אדוני אל מנוח אם תצרני לא אוכל בלחמך ואם תעשה עולה לאדוני תעלנה כי לא יודע מנוח כי מלאך אדוני הוא ויאמר מנוח אל מלאך אדוני מי בשמך כי יבא דבריך וכיבדנוך. ויאמר לו מלאך אדוני, למה זה תשאל לשמי והוא כלים. ויקח מנוח את גדי העזים, את, את המנחה, ויעל על הצור לאדוני, ומפליא לעשות, ומנוח ואשתו רואים. ויהי באה בעלות הלהב מעל המזבח השמיימה ויהי המלאך אדוני בלהב המזבח ומנוח ואשתו רואים ויפלו על פניהם ארצה ולא יאסף עוד מלאך אדוני והראו אל מנוח ואל אשתו אז ידע מנוח כי מלאך אדוני הוא. ויאמר מנוח אל אשתו מות נמות, כי אלוהים ראינו. ותאמר לו אשתו, לו חפץ אדוני להמיתנו, לא לקח מידינו עולם ומנחה. ולא הראנו את כל אלה, וכעת לא השמיענו כזאת. ותלד האישה בן, ותקרא את שמו שמשון, ויגדל הנא, ויברכהו אדוני. ותחל רוח אדוני לפעמו במחנה דן, בן שרה, ובין אשתאול. Wonderfully chanted, I would expect no less from our excellent chanter of our Haftarah. Our Sedra today, in between the issues of Levites and Nazarites and jealous husbands, says a very simple thing. If a man or a woman commits a trespass for his fellow, a trespass before God, he shall confess his guilt and add 25% to the restitution for the false dealing and deception and give it to the one that he cheated. In an earlier Parsha in Exodus, 
This fraudulent conduct, conduct is also uh, fleshed out more. If he dealt falsely with his neighbor and deceived him, it says there, Parshas Mishpatim, if he robbed or oppressed his neighbor, the repayment is accompanied with an asham guilt offering on the altar to God. Why? Why to God too? Because clearly such actions are not only a matter of fraudulent actions towards one's fellow, but they're also acts of deceit to God himself in whose image we were created. Given this, there's no question that law enforcement and legislators all over the U.S. have to get busy having uncomfortable but fruitful conversations of how to make law enforcement and social justice system more colorblind. Congressman Jeffrey's legislation to make police chokeholds illegal across the nation is a start. Shocking brutality in the instances of Ahmad Avery in Georgia the men involved in the murder were ex-cops of Eric Garner in Staten Island and now of George Floyd in Minneapolis should sober us to the fact that our policing has a long distance to travel before it can claim to be fair to African Americans. And this is not, of course, the majority of our policemen. But there are there is an element there that is ruining the reputation of law enforcement. In this case, these acts are acts of deceit and deception. Their deception and deceit in that that person is not considered in the same worth of fully human as one's fellow. Using false measures is a hallmark of ona'a, of deception. And acts of deception are also sins against God. Why? Because we were, all of us, created in God's image, and equally precious. On the other hand, there's more deception going on as well as also. There's a deception of some who demonstrate, who decide to become destructive and riotous. That was brought home very sincerely by Rodney Floyd when he spoke to a crowd in Minneapolis about his beloved brother, George. He said, what are you all doing? What are you all doing? My brother would not have wanted looting, would not have wanted breaking store windows. You're desecrating our family's good name. Or as conservative columnist Jeff Joe Kobe put it in his article, quoting Holocaust survivor psychologist Viktor Frankl in his book, Man's Search for Meaning, there are two races, and there have always been two races of men men who are indecent, and men who are decent. The race of the indecent, Jacoby writes, does not include men and women who are infuriated at the sight of injustice or police brutality. It does not include those who respond with nonviolent protests, demonstrations, marches, and civil disobedience. There's nothing indecent about those who cry out in horror and anger at the death of Floyd and Arbery or demand political change to prevent such atrocities, or insist that the full weight of the law be brought to bear against those responsible for committing them. But the legions, he continues, of the indecent must certainly include those whose reaction to the terrible violence inflicted against Floyd is to inflict their own violence, smashing, burning, robbing, even killing against others. There's nothing decent about riots that erupted in dozens of cities over the last few days. There was only pointless destruction and inexcusable lawlessness. Let's beware not only of the oppression and deception of bad cops. Let's be aware too of the deception and the oppression of opportunists and maybe even anarchists who willfully use their cover of darkness to loot, riot, vandalize, put lives in danger and escalate tensions. But we should also think about one more area where we ought not oppress or deceive, which is in the corporate world as well. Because as Elie Wiesel said, the opposite of good is not necessarily evil. It's silence. Silence cannot be tolerated, and corporations ought to responsibly call out racial and social injustices as well. They ought to do work in their own corporate world 
and they ought not to hide behind the argument that you don't want to play politics uh, in terms of, in the, in the face of brutality, one must do so. It doesn't wash. And a field that's so skewed against racial equality must be addressed. Howard Schultz learned the hard way when he had baristas right on cups race together, you might recall some five years ago, as a way of broaching better race relations after police mishandling of two black men who wanted to stay in the store for some hours and were arrested. His method was seen, unfortunately, as patronizing and somewhat heavy-handed, but one can at least give him credit for honestly trying. Randall Stevenson, the CEO of AT&T, courageously stated the obvious, that not only is this a moral imperative, but it's good business to lean our shoulders into this issue to affect social change. We're good as a lobby to affect lots of economic policy changes. This one such policy change is, in fact, economic policy change, because business and markets suffer when there's social unrest. And the realities faced by our black American community is simply unfair when it comes to law enforcement and encountering police. They have to advise their children to make sure that they roll up the windows when they drive through a nice neighborhood. And God forbid, if they get caught, to make sure that they put their hands on the hood immediately when they step out of the car. Those things don't exist for those that aren't black. Such an attitude may well put Stevenson uh, at, the for at the vanguard in the corporate world, but I think many CEOs could learn from him. Certainly the CEOs of Facebook and Twitter to label tweets that come from any source as problematic and even unfit for its platforms promoting. In the event of such statements, are ones that incite or spread fear. This is apparently the reason why some 180 employees walked out of Facebook in protest. That is the failure of Mark Zuckerberg to slap a warning label on President Trump's tweets about sicking dogs on protesters who might think about scaling walls of the White House or shooting starting when looting starts. Civil rights concerns anti-Semitism concerns, social justice concerns should be more closely monitored no matter where the source is. Twitter flagged these tweets saying that it violated their company's rules about glorifying violence. Facebook left it alone. It should give us some thought, should, should be a spur for our thinking. In my mind, for companies with such massive distribution networks to allow irresponsible messaging to go uncommented upon is the equivalent of deception and oppression because such messaging has the effect of flat fanning the flames of the social tensions that are at this time so very high in our society. I have no easy answers as this wades into politics and I always get in trouble when I start talking about politics, and it wades into issues of censorship. But it is time we realize that we're all in this together and that we can no longer abide while our society systemically applies unequal measures when they ideally should always be the same. May our country come together. We cannot continue to trespass upon our fellows to deceive and to oppress. May we realize that while we're not a perfect union, it's nevertheless incumbent upon us to work for it more passionately through the months and years ahead. Our future as a nation hangs in the balance. May all of us, politicians, legislators, judges, corporations, individuals, summon our collective will to make it better because we got no choice and we've got a great distance to go 
And to that we say, Amen. And at this time, I call upon our cantor, Fazen Waldeck, to lead us in a rousing melody of Ein Kelohema. Yes, talk, Rabbi. We will conclude with Ain Kelohenu. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, again, leave a message in the comments about what melodies you'd like to hear or uh, any particular subjects you'd like our rabbi to address. And with that, Ain Kelohenu. Shabbat Shalom.